Okay, so the first round, well, first night, I guess, of the WWE draft just concluded on SmackDown, uh, give or take about 10 minutes ago. Um, this this was weird. Um, I mean, going into the night, the fact that uh, the first thing off that it said was a match that was going to decide who got to make the first pick. And so I thought, oh, they're going to do what I lo always loved when they did the draft, which is they brought back the board from Press Your Luck. Uh, you know, the one that went, boop, 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 boop. And, you know, you just go, no whammies, no whammies, big bucks, big bucks. And then it would reveal the draft pick. But, uh, no, they just had Stephanie McMahon making the choices. And um, the rules uh, the rules were a little wonky in this. Okay, I have it uh, right here on my phone. Um, 70 superstars have been placed into this year's draft. Uh, 30 droopers... 30... Yeah. Okay, so let me start this again. <laughs> um, over 70 superstars have... God, I can't talk. So. Over 70 superstars have been placed in the draft. Uh, 30 are eligible to be drafted uh, in the first night, basically, on SmackDown. And 40 are eligible to be drafted on Monday. For every two picks that SmackDown gets, Raw gets uh, three picks, because Raw is the longer show and thus must have a larger roster. Uh, tag teams count as one pick unless either Fox or USA Network, because uh, there's no general managers or commissioners in this. It's actually the networks themselves that are making the picks. And they can pick one superstar from a team. They can will, Basically, they can choose to break up a tag team if they so desire. Uh, no tag teams were really broken up. Uh, and then any undrafted superstars, from, um, I guess after Raw, will be immediately declared free agents and allowed to choose a brand of their own, basically. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they made it kind of look a little bit like the NFL draft, or maybe even the NBA draft. I haven't watched the NBA draft in a long time. Uh, I didn't, never watched the NHL draft either, but uh, they had a war room set up, and in one of the, uh, the Fox war room, they had Cletus, the uh, CGI robot, who they always use as their, uh, in their animated show openings, basically, you know. If you watch the Fox NFL pregame, he's the, the, spi the one that spikes the football, he plays soccer sometimes for soccer coverage, you get the idea. Um, but I guess let's go into everything proper here because, again, I'll, well, the matches involved are not going to go too deep into them. They're, I'm just going to say a couple things and then we'll go over what the draft picks were. And I'm already kind of having some problems with this. Uh, but first off, the, uh, the first pick of the night was settled in a match between Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. Uh, Basically, uh, like I said before, the executives are picking it. There's no general managers or commissioners involved. So it's the executives from Fox and USA Network who are uh, selecting these rosters, as they say. Uh, the match itself was pretty decent. Uh, good action. Uh, went about 25 minutes and ended with uh, Seth Rollins countering a spear into the pedigree, then going for the stomp, only for the lights to go out and the fiend to pop up from the ring and pull Seth Rollins down, which uh, causes a disqualification for SmackDown and means Raw wins, so Raw gets the first pick. Uh, Raw selected Becky Lynch, who was already on Raw, so uh, it, okay. Uh, and Roman Reigns goes to SmackDown. Um, okay, again, those aren't draft picks, they were already on those brands. Uh, the OC goes to Raw, again, not a draft pick. Uh, this actually does count as a draft pick. The fourth one, The Fiend, goes to SmackDown. And then uh, Drew McIntyre to Raw. So, yeah, again, uh, let's see, that was five picks, and really only one of them counted as a draft pick. All the others were people choosing, yeah, going to the same brands they were always on. Okay. It just didn't make any sense. Uh, at that point, uh, we then get another match to break things up. This uh, this does not dictate pick order after this. It's pretty much the same no matter what. Uh, it's Raw drafting first uh, for each round in this night, basically. Uh, so the next match was King Corbin versus Chad Gable. I'm not calling him Shorty Gable. Uh, Gable had Corbin in an ankle lock. And, uh, Corbin fought out, hit the end of days for the three-count of victory. Uh, after that, uh, we had Randy Orton go to Raw from SmackDown, so I count that as a draft pick. Sasha Banks goes to SmackDown, okay, that's also a draft pick, she was on Raw, so. Uh, Ricochet goes to Raw, he was already on Raw, that's not a draft pick. Strowman to SmackDown, that's a draft pick, because he was on Raw. And Bobby Lashley to Raw again, not a draft pick. 
Uh, sorry for getting repetitive on this, but yeah, I'm going to be hammering this home all night. Uh, after that, uh, Lesnar and Paul Heyman came out to cut a promo on Cain Velasquez, who then came out. Um, yeah. Also, uh, they did sort of a draft recap group with uh, Renee Young, Samoa Joe, Booker T, and Beth Phoenix. I really didn't pay much attention to any of those. Uh, after that, we had a six-man tag match, the OC versus the New Day. Uh, nothing to really say here except Kofi at the Trouble Paradise on AJ Styles to win for the New Day. I thought this might mean that they will break up the New Day and Kofi would go to Raw to feud with AJ Styles. Or maybe even the New Day would go to Raw. But no, that didn't happen. It said uh, Alexa Bliss to Raw, not a draft pick. Lacey Evans to SmackDown, okay, that uh, does count as a draft pick. Kevin Owens to Raw, that counts as a draft pick. The Revival to SmackDown, not a draft pick. And Natalya to Raw, not a draft pick. <sighs> Yeah, I, I know. I'm, I'm, that, this is what's really irking me. That none of these are draft. A lot of these are just not draft picks. People switching brands are draft picks. Not switching brands are not draft picks. Ugh. Anyway, uh, that led us into uh, the main event, which is a rematch for the SmackDown Women's Championship: Charlotte versus Bailey. Uh, the news that's coming out of this one is Bailey has finally gone full heel now. She. Uh, Charlotte comes out to her music, Bailey comes out, it's the usual bubbly, you know, Bailey theme and the hugging and everything. She comes out, but then she stops and she just, and she stops smiling. She she's wearing a hood, she pulls it back, she's cut her hair, so it's not up in the ponytail anymore. She is in uh, darker tights, she's not yet none of the hugging stuff, all of that's gone, all of the spangles and you know, the sashes and stuff like that, the slap bracelets, they're all gone. And then she takes out a pair of shears and she stops, pop, starts popping the wacky, waving inflatable arm flailing tube men. So yeah, she uh, Bailey has gone full heel. Uh, match itself was pretty good. I mean, a really good, solid match these two can put on. I probably put it a little bit behind their match from Hell in a Cell, but still overall decent. Um, but yeah, uh, basically what happens is uh, Bailey or. Uh, um, Charlotte went for a moonsault, Bailey got her knees up, but Charlotte managed to kind of just avoid the knees and started to try to lock up, uh, started to do something else, but uh, Bailey got angry, started to fight with the ref, Charlotte hit the natural selection, went for the figure eight, but Bailey uh, grabbed a handful of Charlotte's hair, which is illegal in women's wrestling, and pulled her into a small package for the three count and the victory. Uh, I think it was supposed to look dirty, but it really didn't, unfortunately. It just looked like she countered it into a small package. Uh, but still, she got the three-count of victory. Bailey is once more SmackDown Women's Champion. Afterwards, Bailey grabbed the mic and said, Screw you, bitches. Screw all of you. So, like I said, yeah, Bailey has gone full heel. Um, they did not come out to announce... They said the McMahon did not come out to announce the next round of draft picks. Instead, they ran them as a ticker line in the uh, the main event, basically, and they went by so fast I had to rewind my DVR to uh, to get all of them. So these are not in proper order. The uh, Nikki Cross goes to Raw, not a draft pick. She was already on Raw. Street Profits to Raw. Okay, they were already appearing on Raw, so again, I'm not counting that as a draft pick. Uh, Viking Raiders to Raw, not a draft pick. They were already on Raw. Uh, Lucha House Party SmackDown. I think they were on Raw. I can't quite remember. So I'll, I'll count this as a tentative draft pick. And then Heavy Machinery to SmackDown. Again, not a draft pick. And Yeah, um, I do like some of the brand switches. I think I, I am sort of which, however, the uh, Sasha Banks, I guess, is the big one. Sasha Banks going from Raw to SmackDown uh, is intriguing, but... It does make you wonder what are they going to do with Bailey uh, um, since she just won the championship back. Uh, are they going to feud? Are they going to work together? Is Charlotte going to stay on SmackDown? Is she going to go over to Raw and feud with Becky Lynch? Uh, there are some intriguing things to that. Uh, I do like that it seemed the women kind of got the spotlight in a lot of this part of the draft. Uh, I thought that was really good. and, and Again, it proves that they are... Uh, putting effort behind women's wrestling again. They're not just doing it for, uh, you know, for the name value, I guess, for lack of a better term. But again, so many of these didn't feel like draft picks. Like I said, Becky Lynch to Raw. She was already on Raw. 
Roman Reigns is SmackDown. He's already on SmackDown. Those aren't draft picks. People switching brands should be draft picks. Uh, the Fiend, Bray Wyatt to SmackDown. Uh, okay, I guess his feud with Seth Rollins is over, and Finn Balor's on NXT, so what are you going to do with him exactly? Um, are we going to do, you know, something with, at Survivor Series? Is he maybe going to attack Brock Lesnar? Um, I, I guess it could be intriguing. Uh, Braun Strowman to SmackDown. Again, kind of, I think kind of a long time coming. I mean, if you remember during the Superstar Shake-Up, it kind of teased that he was, and then he didn't for some reason. Uh, could be, like I said, could also be intriguing. Um, they, they also made some references to the idea that there could be some trades that happen as well. So just because someone gets drafted doesn't mean they will necessarily stay on that brand. And there's also injured superstars who aren't quite available. Uh, Samoa Joe has a thumb injury. So he could, again, he could be these ones that becomes a free agent and gets to go wherever he wants. That could be intriguing. Uh, unfortunately, again, the big, big drawback right now is draft picks that don't feel like draft picks. It just feels kind of wasted. Uh, I'm going to be giving tonight uh, the first night of the draft, not first round, because they called them rounds in this. Yeah, I'm confused too, but uh, I'm just going to say this first night, I'm going to give it a C. Okay, so again, um, next video I'm hoping will be a Gemini Man review. I cannot guarantee for sure because um, we did get hit with a snowstorm early this morning. It was really bad, and now they're saying we might get hit with another one. Uh, we are, I believe, still in a winter storm morning. Let me check. Yes, we are still in a winter storm warning until 1 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, phone goes off just as that happens. Uh, um, anyway, uh, so hopefully there will be a Gemini Man review. I cannot guarantee it. If not, I will try to see if I can get it out on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. Um, so hopefully that will work out. I will, however, be getting the... Uh, uh, the second round of this done uh, with Raw because that will be happening. That's going to be three hours. Oof. Uh, hopefully more interesting things will happen there. See you all next time. constantly talking only about WWE and NXT. Want to see me expand my wrestling coverage? Check out my Patreon at Sleepy Time for Cat Productions. Also, remember, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and ring that notification bell.